going to be talking about my top five rookie wide receivers ahead of the NFL Combine. Just kind of want to get into the, the weeds a little bit on some of these guys, kind of get a, a good foundation for where we're going to stand on some of these players. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, first up, it's going to be Jackson Smith Najigba for me. Um, I, I know there's some concerns with him, especially with this year. He didn't really play this year. He played the first couple of games of the season, and then he pretty much missed the rest of the year with an injury. I, I personally think it was a business decision. You can feel however you want about that, but I felt like he pretty much showed everything he needed to in his sophomore season uh, whenever he was playing and outproduced guys like Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. So uh, when you look at JSN, six foot one, 200 pounds, he only played 60 snaps in 2022. But in 2021, he had 95 receptions on 112 targets for 1,595 receiving yards and nine touchdowns. Heading into this year, he was kind of people's unquestioned number one wide receiver, but he didn't really play this year, and somehow people are holding it against him. And I've seen people have him all the way down at wide receiver six, seven, eight, and sometimes I think that's just people trying to be hot. But for the most part, uh, he's kind of anywhere from one to five for most people. But uh, it's pretty clear, I think, what he brings to the table. I mean, if you look at his 2021 season, uh, he was first in yards per route run in 2021. And yes, that is better than guys that came out in last year's class. Um, he was 15th in yards after the catch per reception. He had a 9.3 average depth of target, uh, 12th in missed tackles force, and he had a 2.9 receiving yards per team pass attempt, which was second among all wide receivers. Uh, this is a very good number. Uh, really, we want we look at anything over a 2.5 as being good. 2.9 is excellent. And so, uh, you know, there's not a lot of concerns with him. Even in, in deep targets, he had 18 deep targets, uh, 13 receptions, and 424 uh, deep yards. There are there has been some reports that he may fall into the second round. I don't think that's going to happen. He's one of the most polished wide receivers in this class. Uh, he played a ton in the slot, 88% of the slot snaps for him. He played next to guys who were first-round picks in this past year's draft. Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, and he outproduced both of them. And, you know, take this for whatever it's worth, but uh, Garrett Wilson and Olave were both asked who they thought the better wide receiver between the trio were, and they both answered JSN. And so I just think that he is the, I think he is the real deal. I think, I don't care about what happened this year. I don't care that he decided he didn't want to play. I think it was smart. He knew he was uh, headed to the NFL. And, you know, for most people, he was the number one wide receiver. I don't, I'm not going to knock him because he didn't play this year. So JSN is my number one wide receiver uh, right now. Next up, we have Jordan Addison from USC. He obviously transferred from Pitt, six foot 175, great breakout age of 18.6. In 2022, he recorded either a touchdown or 100 yards receiving in his, in his six of his first seven games. Then he suffered ankle injury and missed two games. Now, there's going to be a lot of knock against him because of his size, but I think we've seen enough here with smaller wide receivers that just because they're small, you know, it doesn't really correlate to NFL success. We have seen wide receivers like Jalen Waddell, Devonta Smith, Hollywood Brown, Jahan Dotson of last year find success in the NFL playing, you know, at a much smaller uh, size. So I'm not really worried about that with uh, Jordan Addison. And you're going to find a lot of these wide receivers in this class are on the smaller side. I do not really care. But last year in 11 games, 59 receptions, 875 receiving yards, eight touchdowns. He did play 20% in the slot. Now, if you go back and look at his days at Pitt in uh, 2021, he played in 14 games, had 100 receptions on 144 targets, 1,593 receiving yards, 17 touchdowns. He was 23rd in yard per out run uh, and 64th in yards after the catch per reception with a 26.8% target chair and he played 54.8 percent of the uh, snaps from the slot if you look at him this year he was still pretty good uh 2.78 yards per route run uh 10.7 average depth of target nine deep catches 370 uh receiving yards now so now just looking at the wide receiver he is an excellent route runner it automatically pops up anytime you watch any games that he played in quick twitch wide receiver constantly gets open underneath and works the middle of the field like a savant is what I have uh, on my notes here uh, from watching him. Now some cons, uh, he lacks some physicality in his game. He gets jammed at time when he needs press. He was manufactured touches at USC. 23 of his 59 receptions came on screens. And he doesn't really possess elite speed, but I think that's fine. I think he is somebody that, that could uh, play on the inside or outside at the next level. Somebody that I think that a lot of people uh, comp to Amon Ross St. Brown. I feel like it's a little, a, a little lazy, mainly because you know they obviously both came from USC. But regardless, I, I think he could be a, a next-level weapon as a slot wide receiver on the next level. And a lot of people have him as their number one wide receiver. I have him at number two. I think he is going to be a great wide receiver. I'm not worried about, you know, I'm not worried about his size whatsoever. We saw him at Pitt be an absolute dominant alpha wide receiver with Kenny Pickett at quarterback. So 
Jordan Addison, I think, is locked in. Number two wide receiver. Very safe wide receiver at the next level. Next up, I think, is uh, we're going to get to a little bit more in the weeds with some of these guys. Uh, Quentin Johnson, though, for me, I can have all the way at one, but I have him at three because there are some red flags with him. Six foot four, 215 pounds, a 31% college dominator. 18.5 yards per uh, yards per reception and a 25% college target share while he was at TCU. Now this year he played in 13 games, 60 catches on 96 targets for 1,069 receiving yards and six touchdowns. But uh, his advanced metrics were very good. He was 10th in yards per route run, 11th in yards after the catch per reception, and third in uh, receiving yards per team pass attempt uh, this season with 2.7. He also had 10 deep catches for 427 deep yards. Uh, he's a prototypical X wide receiver, flashed the ability to be an absolute dominant number one wide receiver. He also broke out as a true freshman at TCU. Listen, when you turn on the tape of this guy, he has some of the best tape you will see of anybody in this entire class. He makes highlight contested catches, something that you would see, like makes you think of Randy Moss type uh, of things that he's able to do with the football. He has yak upside. He's dynamic after the catch. He absolutely could be dominant at times, but that is the absolute key word there at times. And that is the one thing you're going to consistently hear people talk about when they talk about Quentin Johnston. He suffers from mental drops at times, and he just kind of disappears from games. It, it is super frustrating to watch because you see this at the, all the traits that you want to see. Big, physical wide receiver, very athletic. I think he's going to uh, surprise some people with how well he runs at the combine. I think he could be a 4-4 guy, especially, which is impressive for a 6'4", 215-pound wide receiver. I, I think I think he is going to wow a lot of people, and a lot of people are going to shoot him up draft boards because of it. But I still think he, if you watch him, you see a lot of really positive things. But a lot of stuff I see people knocking him is because he played in the Big 12, you know, and the wide receivers that we've seen previously come from there, especially from TCU. I'm um, looking at you, Jalen Rager, and, and, and Josh Doxson. Uh, both those guys are absolute bust at the NFL level. But I just think that's unfair. Like, we have to stop doing that just because a player came from a certain team. I mean, obviously, you know, things have changed. We don't have the same head coach as when Josh Doxson was playing at TCU. Like, it's just lazy, lazy analysis. Yes, there are red flags with Quentin Johnson. Absolutely. But the ceiling is absolutely there. This dude could absolutely be a baller at the next level. I think you see some Des Bryant, Demarius Thomas in his game. He could be an absolute wide receiver one. But there's also the chance that he could be a bust. Right now, I think I he is an easy lock for me at number three. I could have him only at one. But right now, I just feel a little bit better about JSN and Jordan Addison. So let's keep it moving here. Let's talk about Zay Flowers, who has been absolutely skyrocketing up people's boards. 5'11", 178. He had a 46.7% college dominator, which is 93rd percentile. He also had a breakout age of 20, which is 63rd percentile. Not great, not bad. In 12 games, 78 receptions, 130 targets, 1,077 receiving yards, 12 touchdowns, and a 29% target share in that offense. Uh, listen, his short area quickness is absolutely electric to watch. He has excellent burst, uh, a decent top end speed, uh, excellent route runner. He might be the most polished route runner in this entire class. He profiles kind of like a slot wide receiver, but I do think he can play on the outside as well. He's similar in certain ways to guys like Tank Dell and Josh Downs. Other people, will, you know, who other people like, especially Josh Downs. A lot of people have him inside their top five, but Zay Flowers is an absolute joy to watch play football. The moves that man is able to make on a football field is not fair. And so, you know, he kind of reminds you almost a little bit of like what Kadarius Tony can do. I know people are going to hear that and not really like that name because there's a lot of uh, not people that don't like Kadarius Tony. But just watching him and his ability to start, stop, make people miss is absolutely electric. I've seen people comp him to Antonio Brown. I think that's a little bit high. We're talking about a Hall of Fame wide receiver there. But Zay Flowers is an absolute dog and uh, somebody that I absolutely love. I think he has a shot to be a first round pick, could be a late first round pick, somebody who's going to fly up draft boards and continue to move up. So I do like Zay Flowers. I think he is somebody that definitely should be on your radar in terms of a rookie draft. Uh, definitely could have him a little bit higher. I've seen people have Zay Flowers even higher than what I do, but I feel pretty confident having that wide receiver number four. Next up, we have Jalen Hyatt from Tennessee, six foot, 180. Uh, 67 receptions this past year, 89 targets. He was the Blitnikoff Award winner, 1,267 receiving yards, 15 touchdowns, and 18.9 yards per reception. Now, this year, he was also uh, pretty efficient. He was sixth in yards per route run, 
49th in yards after the catch per reception, and a, a really healthy 14.1 average depth of target. Now, I will say he did not have a good receiving yards per team pass attempt with only 2.2. Like I said, 2.5 is good. Anything below that is not great. So 2.2 is not very good, but he was, he was an excellent vertical threat. 13 deep catches this year, 633 deep yards, which was second, three contested catches. He also possessed 32% market share of the team uh, receiving yards and 42.8% of the touchdowns uh, for Tennessee this year. He is an absolute burner, vertical threat, easy acceleration, great burst off the line. Problem is he, he does lack creativity after the catch at times, not the most polished route runner, and he, and he came from a very fluky offense in Tennessee. A lot of people have, have comped him to Will Fuller. I don't know if that is the best comp. I know they're both very similar in their deep threat ability. Now, I've seen people think that it's absolutely ridiculous to believe that he can go in the first round. I do not. NFL teams love speed, and it's something that it, you see these teams overvalue speed all the time. Look at the Chiefs when they drafted McCall Hardman, who was an absolute nobody. Nobody was on McCall Hardman whatsoever, and the Chiefs drafted him in the second round. Was it a smart pick? I'm not saying that, but teams absolutely adore speed and his speed is something you cannot teach he is absolutely there's just not a cornerback that you saw and he did it against guys against alabama he absolutely dogged them embarrassed them in that game against alabama he he, he showed well against georgia as well I saw him go against you know the sec competition the you know guys who are going to be playing on sundays you know in the in the future and he did very well but the problem is the offense that he came from was very fluky with josh heupel and we really only have one year of production for Jalen Hyatt. So those are going to be the flaws for him. But I think NFL teams are going to fall in love with his speed because what he's able to do, that vertical threat opens everything up underneath, uh, is, is what NFL teams are going to be looking for in a guy like Jalen Hyatt. Don't be surprised if he runs in the four twos. I think it's definitely in the range of possibility for him. His speed is special. Now, listen, I could have some other guys up here uh, really quickly. Let's talk about some other guys like Josh Downs, who profiles very much as a slot wide receiver, 5'10", 175, had 1,300 receiving yards and eight touchdowns at North Carolina in, in 2021. In 2022, he topped that off with 94 catches for 1,029 yards and 11 touchdowns. He wasn't very efficient whatsoever, but he is great at getting separation underneath, which is going to be a very good slot wide receiver. But right now, I have him at six. And then I think the other guy is Kayshawn Butte that... I could go all over the place with, I really wanted to get him inside my top five. I think the ceiling is absolutely there for somebody like him, but it just felt like he didn't even care this year. Like he didn't want to play. He did play this year, uh, 11 games, 48 receptions, 538 receiving yards, and only two touchdowns. If you look at his tape at, at you know, his freshman and, and sophomore years, it, it, he looks like a completely different player than what he was this year. If it, it seemed like a very lack of a motivation, like he didn't really want to be there. Uh, whatever, which is weird because he said he was going to come back and then he changed his mind. So Keishon Butte, I think he's the guy that I could end up seeing myself move up higher, move up lower. Uh, I think he, he's kind of all over the place for me. But I think guys like him is somebody that could definitely change. I think you also have guys like Cedric Tillman, Rishi Rice, Parker Washington, Michael Wilson, Marvin Mims, are all players that we'll, we'll definitely be getting into. Um, but I really just wanted to kind of hit on my top five. I think those are kind of some of the safer options. So let me know in the comment section below what I get wrong. Which guy do you hate? Which guy do you love? Who, who should I have in my top five? Who do you have in your top five right now? Like I said, the NFL Combine starts here next week. I'm excited to get into that because that's going to kind of fill in some of these gaps for this. And then we'll kind of go back through this. Who are some of our favorite you know, uh, wide receivers heading into the NFL draft in April? So we're getting very close. It is prospect season, ladies and gentlemen. So again, appreciate everybody checking it out. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.